3 Oral Care presents a clinical guide on triple tray dual arch impressioning technique using polyether by Dr. Akhil Reshimwala, practicing prosthodontist and implantologist in Mumbai, who is one among our key opinion leaders from 3M Oral Care. Let us now watch a video showcasing a real time dental procedure. Using a three way syringe, rinse the area and isolate the area using a suction tip. Using a artery forcep, remove the temporary crown. Use a supra gingival scaler, remove the excess cement on the prepared tooth structure. After isolating the area, anesthetize it using lignocaine. Use a three-way syringe to isolate the area. Remove the roughened margins using a rubber cup. Isolate the area before you do the gingival retraction using the cord packer. Retract the gingiva towards all the surface of the tooth. Retract the gingiva completely. So when we are doing the impressioning technique, all the margins are seen clearly. Maintain the isolation, use a three-way syringe and suction tip. Tell the patient to bite to check the occlusion. Preparation for impressioning technique. The materials used here are 3M polyether tray adhesive, 3M elastomeric syringe, triple tray, 3M penta mixing tips. Take the triple tray, place the mesh in the triple tray. This is a reusable stainless steel triple tray. Apply 3M polyether tray adhesive on all appropriate areas wherever the polyether impressioning material will flow back and forth. Allow the polyether tray adhesive to dry on the triple tray. 3M SP Monoface Polyether Impressioning Material Contains a package of base and catalyst The bigger tube contains base and the smaller tube contains the catalyst This is a Pentamix light machine Press the button and release the cartridge To load the catalyst inside the cartridge, look for the alignment guides. They are provided with the V-shape intent 
which should be aligned with the V-shaped notch on the cartridge. The base paste is also has a V-shaped notch on the base and the cartridge. Now, after loading the base and the catalyst, lock the cartridge. and place it back onto the Pentamix light machine. Attach a Pentamixing tip for the 3M SP monoface polyether impression materials to flow. Dispense a small amount of polyether impressioning material onto a tissue paper to check the setting time while we are recording the case on the patient. Take the 3M elastomeric syringe and load it with 3M SP monoface polyether impression material. Now we move on to the impressioning technique. Using 3M SP monoface polyether impressioning material. We are using this with the elastomeric syringe filled completely with monoface. Syringe it all over and use a three-way syringe to avoid any voids or air bubbles. Completely cover the abutment tooth with monoface. Completely place the monoface polyether impressioning material with the elastomeric syringe all over the adjacent tooth. Load the triple tray with 3MSP monoface polyether impressioning material. Please note the position of the hand while dispensing the material on the triple tray. Place it in the mouth and tell the patient to bite. Wait till it sets. Remove the tray. Check for any voids or air bubbles. Isolate the area. Cleanse it with the three-way syringe and a suction tip. Remove the cord packer from the gingiva. Cleanse the area completely using a three-way syringe and suction and isolate the area. Place back the temporary crown. Remove the excess cement. The impression is all set to be sent to the laboratory for further fabrication of processes. Uh, definitely I would recommend a triple tray impression. The reason being the triple tray, uh, I like I illustrate here in this impression that I've just taken is that you get the impression of the tooth in concern right here you get the opposing arch 
and in the same step you get this white registration normally the white registration used is a silicon material uh, prefer, preferred to most other materials available in the market so if you're getting something in this simple one step technique i would definitely use a triple tray over any other technique but there are a few concerns here one being that you need to have a tooth in front of your tooth that is prepared one tooth at the back of the tooth that is to be prepared more the merrier and please don't try and use this with other material because we need a material that flows in its initial stage it's not rigid not viscous like the other materials available in the market it has to flow but when it sets it sets into a rigid impression material which is highly accurate and hydrophilic in nature which you've seen in the video that you've just uh, looked at midway in the clinical situation that we just went through uh, after you've uh, gone through the initial you know syringing of the material around the uh, tooth concern the best way to avoid a air air void or a drag would be to pick up your three way syringe and just blow air now this property of this material is uh, thixotropic you know that's a one take a one property that you use to your benefit because what a thixotropic material does it it flows under pressure the pressure is created by the compressed air that you blow onto it if in case as you will very uh, clearly see in the uh, demo demonstration given earlier that there were any there were areas where we had air bubbles or uh, and uh, even we had an area where there was bleeding uh, this material being hydrophilic when you blow air onto this it flows into the area and if there is an air bubble or a bleed it will expose that area telling you exactly where the air bubble was you can go back again with another uh, you know syringing uh, procedure and make sure that you have no air voids in this area uh yes see sometimes most times we are used to filling up our trays more than what is required if you're looking at uh, using polyether or monophase as a material for crown and bridge dentistry you only require impressioning right up to a little bit covering over the gums we do not require the vestibule then why do we fill up our trays so much but uh, when we do that and if ever that happens the best way to do it is how you open the seal put your index finger to the back of your uh, you know mouth where you will break the seal at the posterior area sometimes you can even ask the patient to blow air by closing their mouth that also breaks the seal and once that happens you can slightly use your fingers to push it out and the tray should be out but yes i do realize that you know overfilling a tray will cause this problem to happen okay that's a question that i've asked most times and you know yes i would like to address it that if you look at this mixing tip right now over here you will feel that this mixing tip has so much of material stuck in it and oh my god i'm wasting so much of material when i could have probably saved this material now i will show you uh, another mixing tip which is unused now when you compare this mixing tip to the one which has been used you'll notice that the entire volume or the maximum amount of this mixing tip is actually filled up by this red tip which does the mixing within the mixing tip now that plunger that bit holds so much of volume that by the time this material actually comes through which looks like the entire tip is filled up with it that spiral actually is holding this entire volume and because this spiral is holding the volume I have done this procedure where I have actually cut a mixing tip and I have seen how much of material is used there is hardly very little material which actually stays inside there so though it looks like uh, there is a lot of material being wasted there ideally there is very little wasted over there if you are using monophase in comparison to probably any other material Uh, for a full arch tray yes it might be slightly more expensive but today a monophase is the gold standard for anything to do with implant dentistry and 
very soon it will be the gold standard for anything to do with crown bridge dentistry. So if you do not mind spending that little bit extra for a full arch tray, then yes, if you ask me truly, yes, it's slightly expensive, but the accuracy that you get with a mono face is going to be far, far better than what you get with any other material. But if you're looking at a scenario where you're doing a single tooth in a posterior area and you're using a triple tray as your impressioning technique, trust me, you will find that this material actually turns out cheaper than everything else because uh, let's break it down. You require a full arch impression in silicone of the tooth which is to be, to be prepared, right? So you, you are, instead of taking half a tray, you're taking a full tray. You require bite registration material which costs you and today if you're using bite, bite registration material like a silicon material, that has a cost. And then thirdly, you require an alginate or a, another asilicon uh, material for your opposing arch. By the time you work out the mats for this entire uh, you know, system, you'll probably find that the polyether used with a triple tray is far, far cheaper than using these three different materials for doing one tooth in your clinic. Yes, see this is the big concern that most labs have when we send this impression to the, uh, this particular impression to the lab. Normally what happens is they do not know how to handle this kind of a tray. What we need to do first is we need to explain to the lab that this material is very accurate. And if it is accurate, your die stone is going to be stuck to this more than it would be stuck to any other impression. Which means what? Let's get into the scientific background, which is surface tension. We need to reduce the surface tension before pouring this impression. Now to reduce the surface tension, we need to dip this impression first in soap water. Once that is done, once the soap water bit is done, you pour the side of your preparation first. Let the die stone set here. After that sets, you turn it over and pour the other side. You do not remove either side after the setting process is complete. You will not detach them from the impression. You will carry this then to the articulator. Please align it where the maxilla is and where the mandible is accordingly. Pour your base which will then connect this entire tray to your articulator. So your base is poured. Once that sets, only then will you actually open the articulator and finally remove this impression. If you by any chance remove this impression to check if there were any voids in it and again put it back in, my dear friends, the entire process is negated because the bite or the bite registration completely changes and that impression will never be accurate you'll always have crowns which are high at the end of this presentation i would like to share uh, 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 an article written by my colleague dr jeff cox uh, who was my colleague at when i did my masters in in australia he I will actually in that article tell you how to use triple trays, not only how to use them and why they are more accurate than your regular full arch trays for single crowns and a repeat for single crowns. Thank you very much. I hope this has been helpful to you.